so let's talk about parallel charging. Uh, parallel charging is uh, somewhat of a controversial topic. Um, I say that because I've heard people say that they never parallel charge, they don't think it's safe, and uh, you know they hear about lipo fires that are the result of parallel charging, and, and they don't want to do it. <clears throat> and, and I say that if you are working with lipos, then you know the possibility of a fire is sort of <laughs> sort of implicit, right? If you charge your 4S battery or your 3S battery on the 4S setting, well, your charger should detect that and refuse to do it. But uh, if you, you know, if you do something dumb, then you can get a fire, right? And and your charger tries its best to save you. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't do anything dumb and you'll be okay. That's <laughs> my point. Uh, parallel charging is hugely useful. Uh, the reason it's useful is that, uh, it, you know, if you have a bunch of packs like this, then charging them individually could take a really long time. Uh, at the very least, it'll take a long time because you're constantly going to be swapping the packs out, right? But So parallel charging lets you charge all the packs at once. Uh, when you put the packs in parallel, they basically act like one really big pack. So I've got, these are 1300 milliamp hour 4S batteries. Uh, and if I put two of them in parallel, it is literally exactly the same as if it was one 2600 milliamp hour. So 1300 times two battery. Uh, that's not entirely true when I say it's literally exactly the same. If you want to really nitpick, the when they when the manufacturer builds these packs, they choose cells that have very similar internal resistance, so that the cells discharge at a similar rate, uh, and so the the internal resistance of the cells within a pack is likely to be closely matched, whereas the internal resistance of the cells. Uh, between two different packs is less likely to be closely matched. Although they're probably still pretty close if they're the same pack from the same manufacturer. So it's not quite exactly the same, but but it, it's essentially the same for, for, for all intents and purposes. So, so now I've got 1300 times two. It's basically one big 4S battery. And we're just making a bigger and bigger 4S battery until if I were to put all these packs in parallel, I would have 1300 times eight whatever that works out to. I don't have that calculator handy, but the, it would be just one big battery of that size. So one of the advantages here is that it just saves you time when you're charging. Instead of having to put one battery on the charger, charge it, unplug it, put the next battery on the charger, charge it, plug, unplug it. You can just put all the batteries on the charger, start the charger, walk away, come back in an hour, two hours, whenever, and it's done. Boom, you're ready to fly. There's no swapping and restarting the charging. But the other advantage is that because the batteries are acting like one bigger battery, you're effectively charging at a lower C rating. Uh, at least that's true if you have a charger like this one. This is the AccuCell 6. It charges at 50 watts or 6 amps. In practice, on charging on 3S batteries, the 50 watt means that you get about 4 to 4.5 amps of charge rate because uh, you can't go at that volt. You only hit six six amps at, at 2S or, or 1S, which, you know, who's doing that? Um, and on 4S, you charge at about three to three and a half amps. So if you think about it, on a 1300 battery, three to three and a half amps is about 2C. Uh, and if you have a 2600 battery, three to three and a half amps is just a little more than 1C. And if you have three batteries, now a 3 amp charge rate is below 1C. So the bigger the battery that you're charging for a fixed amperage, the lower the C rating. So, and as you know, the lower the C, or maybe you don't know this, the lower the C rating you charge at, the better it is for the battery. So charging at higher C ratings uh, heats the battery up, is more likely to wear it out, increase the internal resistance. So those times when you're at the field and you're charging your batteries at you know 5C, uh, if you've got a charger that can do that, you're really cranking them up uh, to try to get back in the air fast. It's not necessarily bad for the batteries. The battery may be rated for that, but it's worse for the battery than if you were charging at a lower C rating. So I think parallel charging is actually better for your batteries because you end up effectively charging at a lower C rating, assuming that you're at a fixed amperage. Now, Let's say that you had a charger that could just crank out the amps 
at that point, you could take the size of the batteries, add them all up, right? You could have 10 1300 milliamp hour batteries, right? That's a 10.3 amp, uh, or rather 13 amp hour battery. Well, if you could charge at 13 amps, that's 1C, right? And you could still charge at 1C, even though these are in parallel. But uh, a lot of us are working off these smaller chargers, and the charger is the limit on your charge rate, at which point you get the advantage. Uh, well, you don't have to change out the batteries as much, and you're effectively charging at a lower C rating, which is better for the batteries. So I think that's good. So what can you do to help keep this safe? Uh, there's a couple guidelines. Uh, first of all, you want to get a quality uh, parallel charging board. I like the fact that this one has a, a plastic case. There's another one that I've got that is a bare circuit board with some coating on the back to cover the traces. That's a, that's it's probably fine, but it's a little sketchy to me. You know, I might I might feel better if that was covered with some uh, some um, uh, paint on you know electrical tape you know liquid electrical tape, right? Uh, but but get a quality charge board. Some of them even have fuses built in that you can change out that'll pop if you get a short or if you get excess current flow. That's not a bad idea. Uh, and then before you plug your batteries in, you want to make sure that you're not about to do something dumb. So, before I plug my batteries in, every time, even if I just got back from the field and I'm sure I flew all the batteries down to 15 volts or whatever, every time, right before I plug them in, I check them with the, with the capacity controller or the, the battery checker. And I'm checking two things. Number one, I'm checking the voltage to make sure that they're all 4S or 3S. So, you cannot parallel charge batteries of a different cell count. So you can't parallel charge a 3S and a 4S together. And the reason for that is that the 3S is going to be at, uh, whatever, 12 volts, and the 4S is going to be at 16 volts or whatever. And when you have two uh, voltage sources in parallel, they're going to feed, one's going to feed current into the other until their voltage is equalized. And so if you plug a 3S and a 4S battery in parallel with each other, the 3S is going to light on fire, probably. Uh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be pretty. So all of the batteries need to be the same cell count, 3S, 4S, 6S, whatever. And all of the batteries need to be about the same charge. So if you have a fully charged 4S and a fully depleted 4S, when you plug them in parallel, the charged one is going to discharge into the, the discharged one and try to charge it up. They're going to try and equalize. And that probably will not result in a fire but it will probably exceed the charge rate of the low battery. The high battery will be fine because these batteries are rated for a very high discharge rate. Might It might puff, but it probably won't light on fire. Uh, and the low battery will definitely get damaged because they, they can't take, they're not made to take current that fast. So the rule of thumb is that for, for the cell count of the battery times 0.1 volts, that's the maximum difference you want between the batteries. So these are 4S batteries, four cells, so I'm gonna make sure they are within 0.4 volts of each other. For 3S, it would be 0.3 volts. The other thing this does is, is if you accidentally have a 3S in here, you'll be like 15 volts, 15 volts, 15 volts, 12 volts, whoops, and you'll throw that one out, okay? So I check this every time. So there's 14.95, and I'm gonna set that battery aside. That's my charging pile. Fifteen oh three. Okay, so we're still within zero point four volts. I'm fine. Fifteen oh eight. Fine. And I'm gonna. I do four batteries at a time because I have eight and I can't fit more than six, so I just split them in half. They would do four at a time. Fourteen nine nine. So we're good to go there. I check them every time immediately before I plug them in. Now, if I walk away from here. If I walk away and go and get a cup of coffee, if I go to the computer to check my email, whatever, I'm going to do that again when I come back. I'm not going to rely on my memory because it only takes one time to screw up and then you have a bad situation or potentially a fire, okay? So this is my charge pile. I've verified that these batteries are safe and ready to go, okay? Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to charge them in. 
I plug the discharge lead in first. Some people say that you should always plug all the discharge leads in first because there is going to be a little bit of current flow while the batteries equalize their voltage with each other. Uh, I feel like if I've gone through the process of checking that they're within 0.4 volts, it's probably not necessary to take that step and it's okay to let the batteries equalize through the balance leads as well. The balance leads can't take as much current because they're thinner wires. So if there was a large balancing current to, to flow between the batteries, it might overheat the, dis the, the balance ports. It's probably not going to be a problem since we've checked that the batteries are pretty close in voltage. All right. The next one. The other thing I do is, although these balance plugs have key keys to make sure you don't plug in the wrong one. I have been able to accidentally make enough contact, like a 3S battery on the 4S connector. I have been able to accidentally make enough contact to make it spark. So when I'm plugging these in, I always very delicately make the initial contact so that if it, if it starts to spark, I quickly unplug it as, as opposed to just kind of jamming it in there and I'm paying attention to see if it starts sparking or anything like that, and it's not. Okay, and one more. And you're ready to go. You're ready for parallel charging. Now we're just gonna charge that, balance charge, set to 6 amps, but it's not going to get even close to that because it's limited to 50 watts. 4S. And away we go. Charging up and uh, come back in an hour or so and uh, and do the other four. That's my, that's, my, uh, that's my opinion on parallel charging. Hope it was helpful. Happy flying.